Adrenaline Radio, 1680 on your AM dial. I'm Fred Blanchard, uh, your host for Adrenaline Motorsports. Uh, this evening, uh, uh, we've been fortunate enough to have uh, Mr. Steve Montrelli back here in studio uh, in the race at this last weekend. You had to have some uh, some ideas to how many type cars showed up and what what was going on in, in that regard. So, I got to believe that there was more than sixteen cars show up to this event. Well, there was uh, in the in the fuel funny cars uh, about four years ago. It started out with three or four cars, and over the country right now. They estimate there's about 65 of them, and there's at least another 10 being built. Uh, at the race, there was cars that came clear from New York. Really? All right. They come from all over the country. Um, matter of fact, one of the cars that came from back east ran the top speed of the meet, fastest car ever, 253.06 in the 320 feet, which is... Uh, he didn't back it up, but uh, there was three cars that ran over 250, and uh, there was probably five or six cars that ran under, uh, let's just say, 585. This is for Nostalgia Funny Cars. This is Nostalgia Funny Cars. Unbelievable. What's happening is, like we talked, uh, the car that I ran a couple years ago, it had a, uh, we'll just say, a, a, a 1980 block in it, and it had basically a set of heads that were made in 1980-something. They were water heads, like Chrysler made originally. These were aftermarket heads, but they were similar to the Chrysler heads that came out on on the 426 Chryslers that were in the FX cars and other cars that were on the street in 1960, whatever year it was, 64 or 5. And then became factory experimental. Exactly. Yeah, that kind of thing. Well, now today what has happened, most everything is made out of, uh, like I said earlier, billet material. Uh, Alan Johnson has made what we call a a nostalgia fuel funny car head to, to go on these uh, 413 inch motors and what it does it just makes everything more efficient so basically to tell the audience basically what a billet head is it's taking a extruded piece of alloy aluminum and putting it on a tool fixture and start manufacturing from uh, computer drawings to uh, and, and make a finished cylinder head out of an alloy mat- piece of material whereas it's not like cast heads as we know it back in the early days where you had to make a pattern and you ended up pouring the metal and uh, formulating uh, your part today, they're using pretty much billet parts, right? Right, and basically everything's done on a computer. It goes into the CNC machine. The tooling is changed, put in the right tools, and it goes from uh, A to A to Z or however you want to say it, plus and minus, whatever, and it makes this part. It'll It'll duplicate the part time and time and time again, where in the old days we had castings, which when we machined them, they were all machined on, uh, let's just say, on uh, uh, one person manufacturing it, using all hand tools. I don't mean by hand tools, but... Well, metal cutting machine tools. Yeah, yeah, exactly. would uh, take care of some of that. Now they they can make this stuff so quick today, and if they want to make a change, they put it on the the CAD camera and they make their changes and boom, there's your new part. Yeah. Well, that, I got to tell you that uh, since those early days, I do know that uh, uh, the processes have changed in the manufacturing of components and I do know that uh, even some uh, of the new processes for casting has really, really expanded itself to get, getting into uh, the high-tech areas, uh, and I know they use uh, high-tech castings for aircraft and what have you, and there's nothing wrong with the casting. It's just that uh, basically uh, they've chosen to use uh, these particular billet materials uh, to make their parts from because it seems like uh, you push a button type of a thing and instead of having to make a pattern, and and, uh, and that's kind of how it's worked out, and it's, that's part of the evolution in this sport. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch bases with you on, Steve, and uh, give me give me an idea how many cars did show up to this thing. Well, there was 36 cars, and there was 32 that made the show. There was 32 cars to qualify. 
Uh, 36 cars showed up, and uh, four cars had some engine problems, uh, which is, you know, that's going to happen. Well, in that's normal years. in fuel racing, yeah. I can tell you that. Well, I mean, through the race. <laughs> and then we had bad weather up there. Uh, one day it would rain and uh, the wind, and uh, they'd have to stop the track, and then maybe they'd have an oil down, which uh, they didn't have too many. And they had, I think, four oil downs during the weekend as far as the fuel funny cars went. Uh, the majority of cars went right down the track and uh, and did a good job. They might have had a little bit of problem down at the other end, but uh, nothing on the uh, racing surface. Uh, the it's just un- amazing. Uh, I, I remember back in uh, the sixty late sixties and stuff when we uh, had Orange County Raceway, and we had what they called the manufacturer race, and there'd be sixty four funny cars there. And I could also remember being at at Indianapolis one year where everybody would, you could qualify, as long as you could get to the starting line, you could go up and qualify. And I can remember we probably made 18 runs in seven days. It used to be a seven-day deal at Indy. And you would get in line and do all your work in line and just keep going to the starting line. We didn't change engines then. <laughs> we, you know, we didn't have that problem. Well, uh, you didn't have the quality of parts you're running today, too. That's a little different deal, too. Right. I can remember, though, that there was 100 funny cars in line. A hundred of them. One hundred funny cars. And I can remember at Bakersfield, there was 64 to 100 top fuel cars in 19... Uh, I don't know, 59, 60, 61 in that area. They would run 64. They would run all 64 on Saturday, and then they would run 32 on on uh, Sunday. And uh, it's just unheard of. Uh, today you wouldn't be able to do that for the simple reason the cars run faster and there is more breakage. Yeah. Well, I I have, you know, have a sign on my wall in my office at home where <laughs> it says 100 and funny cars. It's <laughs> Orange County Raceway. I I, I, sa- I saved that, and yep. that was those were the days. Let me ask you. Uh, we talk a little bit about uh, uh, these events and how they uh, pretty much are, are going on right now, but what we haven't talked about is uh, the guys behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, I'm sure that you can tell us a little bit about uh, who who is behind uh, what's bringing this about uh, because of the. Evolution, as I mentioned, that the drag racing currently is going through. Why don't you shed a little light on that, Steve? Well, there's been two or three different individuals that have tried to put this nostalgia thing together. Uh, and uh, let's just say that the thing kind of is not that it's fallen apart. It's just there was no organization whatsoever. And about two years ago, maybe three years ago now, uh, Steve Gibbs, which is... Well, he was a, he was very much involved with NHRA. Well, he was yeah, and then he retired from there and went to the museum, and now I guess he retired from the museum, and somebody else took it over. So Steve kind of got involved with this with Bakersfield and uh, uh, for the nat- calling out the the big race out here. There's two, one from the Her- It's called the Heritage now, and that's the one Steve does. And then there's one at the end of the year, which I believe is just done by the racetrack. There's new things coming about in these fields as well. I heard rumor about uh, not only that they have the the funny cars, the front motored fuel dragsters. Uh, there's something else coming up. Uh, somebody, you, was it you that mentioned it? Uh, there's a talk about uh, the uh, '80s uh, version of the drag race uh, dragster. What's that? What's that all about? Well, Steve? that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking. What I see at the racetrack is uh, all of a sudden they're going to have a another class, which is going to be a nostalgia class, and I'm going to call it the '80s cars. Maybe maybe uh, '75 to '85. Uh, it's be the first rear engine cars, and they're approximately 260 inches long versus the big cars at the big race, which are 300 inches long. Uh, they're also going to have limitations, but they'll have a two-speed in them, rear engine car, they'll have a wing on them, and it's really going to make it a lot easier for the, for the racer financially because they shouldn't break the engines as easy as they're doing with these nostalgia dragster front engine cars that they're they just keep trying to go faster and faster and faster and they got a small tire on them they need a taller tire they need a bigger fuel pump and then obviously that makes it bit more dangerous uh the rear engine car you could see, probably see some 540 cars with no problems run all day long run 540s and 550s in the dragster 
uh, very nice cars, and they'll bring back the the, the over the uh, the Ridge Route Terrors, Warren Coburn Miller, or uh, uh, the uh, 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 over the Hill Gang car, for instance, or the Dick LaHaye car. All the cars that ran five uh, forties, five fifties, sixties in that area and didn't have any major breakage.